Oh, it's the No Face Movement, and it's December the 13th, 2012, and I'm bringing breaking news here in Michigan as we move towards the fiscal cliff of 2013. Our state leaders, our state senators, doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republican, they're playing games. Because right now, throughout the whole country, they got to make a lot of cutbacks. And I'm going to give you a prime example. This is from my state, Michigan State, Detroit, Michigan. Press play, Mystique. And thanks to Mystique, too. The governor, the new law will restrict abortions from insurance coverage, which means women will have to anticipate being raped or molested years in advance and purchase a separate health care rider on their insurance policy. I think that women need to really wake up, make their voices heard. There's nothing that's done that can be undone if women are willing to vote, if they're willing to stand up, if they're willing to petition, and if they're willing to really make it known that we cannot have politicians being our doctors. Maria Lou Fox 2 News. Um, and here comes the real news, folks. From the streets of Lansing to the streets of Detroit, right to work protesters have taken over downtown, speaking out against Michigan becoming the 24th right to work state. Local faith, union, and community leaders gathered at West Grand Boulevard and 3rd Street. They're marching, carrying flags and torches, demanding change. Meanwhile, the lame duck session is winding down right now, but lawmakers have a long agenda of unfinished business. And that includes a business tax cut, a new home for the Detroit Red Wings, and guns in schools and churches. Fox 2 political correspondent Tim Skubik is monitoring the last-minute rush to adjourn. Tim? That's exactly what it is. A ton of issues are on the agenda, and this day has been very, very, very difficult for the Detroit folks. But at the end of the day, I think the Illich people are going to get what they wanted. Let's uh, talk to the governor, first of all, about what's going on. Black's Governor Rick Snyder ate a hot dog from the vendor who got clobbered in that melee on the Capitol lawn earlier this week. Meanwhile, in the legislature, his top priority was a business tax cut for Detroit automakers and other major manufacturers. But local governments will lose revenue if the tax is repealed. And the lobbyist for the city wants a guarantee they'll get the money back. But the plan on the table doesn't get there. That's not a guarantee, and we've said all along that we need full and guaranteed replacement, and that's what we're looking for. This Republican wants to legalize concealed weapons in churches, schools, sports arenas, and daycare centers over the objections of all those groups. There are illegal guns everywhere, and people like to use them, and no one has the ability to defend themselves. So this will deter crime? I think it will. Urban lawmakers are rejecting the governor's call for a new emergency manager law. What they want instead is more money. You but hear the that? Republican leader argues even if he had the money, he would not send it. Not until we fix the structure first. You can't just bail people out and say we're going to continue to make bad promises. The Mike Illich family wants legislation to build a new home for the Red Wings, but because Democrats are angry with the Republicans on the way they jam through right-to-work legislation, they are threatening to withhold any yes votes. The governor's not impressed with that. Well, that's one of the issues I think is really unfortunate. That's one of the reflections about a broken political culture. Because shouldn't we focus on the customer? Well, within the half hour, the vote was taken in the Michigan House, and the Illich proposal did pass with two Democratic votes and three other conservative Democrats who hooked up with Republicans to send it to the Michigan Senate, where approval is expected later on tonight. Also, guys, at this very hour, they continue to debate the new emergency manager law in the state Senate. The Democrats tried to change it. They failed within the hour or so. That should pass as well. So the lame duck is limping toward a conclusion as lawmakers want to get out of here for the holidays, leaving behind lots of stuff for us to talk about. Uh, believe me. I tell you, some people are still amazed that Governor Rick Snyder, who ran as a moderate, uh, but is now apparently something else. Is he going to sign all of these bills tonight? Um, he's on board with most of them. Uh, he got what he wanted on Tuesday on Right to Work. Uh, he's on board with the abortion issue, which is still pending in the House. They have not voted on that yet. He obviously wants the EM. He obviously wants the Illich family to get that money from the state. And uh, so he's getting his Christmas early this year, guys. Apparently exactly what he oh. wants. All right, Tim, thank you. Other news right now. Many non-union Detroit City employees got bonuses this year despite all the financial troubles. But as Fox News' Alexis Wiley explains, Mayor Dave Bing says he is still committed to ending those payments. How dare the mayor do this? 
bit frustrating. City employees like June Nickelberry have already taken a 10% pay cut, and now they're facing furloughs. They want to close city government down every Monday. And AFSCME leadership says those furlough days add up to a 20% pay cut, and that's on top of the 10% their members have already swallowed, and the possibility of layoffs. That seems like cutting off your nose to spite your face because these people, if they're not already seeking public assistance, will be taking do dollars from taxpayers under public assistance. They won't be able to survive. So you can imagine their reaction when they learned that more than 1,100 union and non-union city employees received bonuses, ranging from $150 to $750, costing the city nearly $500,000. This obviously has nothing to do with money or budget issues or finances. This has to do with control and takeover. He's full of it and it ain't right what he's doing. So what's Mayor Bing have to say? His office says those bonuses were an 89% decrease from last year's payout of more than $4 million. The mayor's statement says longevity bonus payments made to union employees... All right, there's a lot of stuff going on here in Michigan as we head towards fiscal cliff year 2013. And the bailout... Man, there's a lot of stuff going on, folks, all right? They want to take over the city before Fiscal Cliff 2013, if it does fail. That means that the federal government would be institutionalized here. Institutionalized. And, yeah, institutionalized here in the city of Detroit. Um, just write, subscribe, and comment. I'm going to do a follow-up video to this. Um, please write, subscribe, and comment. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and on Blogspot. This is the movement, movement, movement. Until next time, facing off.